So Cardinal Fernandez has issued a clarification, which is a rollback on his original fiducia supplicant statement saying that no further clarification was needed after he gave an, an interview and after 50 different bishops conferences wrote to him about this confusing document. I'm just going to make one point because uh, I know bishops listen to my channel and maybe the odd cardinal is listening to my channel. We've just gone through this synod on synodality process. And during that synodal process in Rome, Pope Francis asked for confidentiality about what was discussed during the synodal process. Uh, given the fact that the two previous uh, prefects for the doctrine of the faith, Cardinal Adaria and Cardinal Muller, both of them, never issued one single declaration during their tenure. You have to go back 25 years to the last declaration issued by the, the doctrine of the faith. Uh, given that, that this was surely the, the Vatican would have known that it was going to cause debate, wouldn't it have been better to have that debate in the Synod? Wouldn't it have been better to present the text of that declaration at the Synod and to get feedback in the Synod? After all, it was going to remain confidential, the discussion. Why are we not using the Synod of Synodality to discuss precisely these types of declarations. Or, let's face it, is the, synod and synod, is the synodal process dead? Or redundant? Or a fig leaf? Or what is it? You know, this type of declaration, all of this, what you're seeing in the church, should never have happened. It, the declaration shouldn't have been published and we shouldn't have to have the interviews and the clarifications and the debate and the rejections and the division and the confusion. That's not from God. And so the feedback I'm giving to the leadership in the church is if you're going to have a synodal process, a synod, that's where the declaration should have been discussed. And it wasn't. So what is the point? Is the synod synodal process actually dead um i don't know i mean just to my own thoughts on this even before this document priests were blessing people in irregular situations all the time all the time in every diocese in this world because i've been at many masses where the priest will say look if you're not in a state of grace or if you're not a catholic please do not receive communion. But you can come up with your arms crossed and I'll give you a blessing. And I've seen transsexuals and gay couples and Muslims and Hindus going up with their arms crossed to receive a blessing. For example, during a Camino de Santiago Mass, where you have people from all around the world, many non-Catholics, and they walk into a Mass and the priest knows, look, in this Mass I can see that there are people here that are not Catholic. Uh, just so you're aware, communion is uh, is a sacrament and you need to be Catholic in a state of grace to receive it. But if you're not, come up with your arms crossed and I'll give you a blessing. Nobody said anything. You know, happened in every diocese. Couples, whoever, you know, they, that's what happened if they happened to be at a mass or at a funeral. Seen it at a funeral. You know, a lot of people, different people come to a funeral and the priest will say, look, communion is a sacrament that Catholics receive and you have to be a baptised Catholic in a state of grace and if you're not you can come up and I'll give you a blessing and I think Cardinal Fernandez he, he opened this door up and made it a lot more confusing than it actually needed to be in my opinion but the biggest flaw in this whole document in this whole declaration and in this clarification is you just came out of a synod you just came out of the Synod of Bishops. Why didn't you get feedback at that Synod? Why didn't you get feedback at that Synod? And those topics were discussed at that Synod. You know, we had Bishop Barron in his, uh, reflect on it. Bishop Barron reflect on it. So it's out of love for the Church I give this feedback. If you're going to launch us on this Synod on Synodality, use it. Use it for what you could use it for. But just don't sidestep it and say, look, well, look, well, yeah, we had it, but we didn't bother, you know. Use it. What was the rush? What was the rush to publish this when we have 
this, a synod coming up this year, another session, wouldn't it have been an opportune moment to put that declaration at that synod and to get feedback at that synod and to avoid this confusion that has come out afterwards? Because the document is very confusing when it doesn't need to be. I think priests knew, priests before this document, they, you know, if people presented them for a blessing, they, you know, he would have given a blessing, you know, it was, he wasn't going to ask one who, you know, what type of irregular situation you're, you know, people don't, you know, the priests had the sense, the sense and the common sense to know. Um, but the big problem, and let's address it, let's address the problem, the elephant in the room is Father James Martin. No sooner was that Fiducia Supplicant's document ink dry than you had a Jesuit, a member of the Synod, um, a member of the Department of Communications in the Vatican, you know, um, photographed many times with, with the Pope. You had Father James Martin, Martin rushing to organise a press release, to organise a photographer, to take a photo, to put in the New York Times. Uh, you know... It, Accept responsibility for the confusion yourselves have created. The Vatican created this whole confusion. The Jesuits created this confusion. They did. And Cardinal Fernandez could say, just come out and say, sorry, what Father James Martin is doing. That's not the correct interpretation of this document. Easy. Solve the problem. Yeah, but, you know, it seems that, that the only LGBT apostolate being promoted by the current pontificate is outreach and Father James Martin. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, the Pope promote any of the other apostolates in that area that previous popes uh, supported. I don't know. It's very interesting. Let me know your feedback. But this is honest feedback for bishops and priests listening to my channel, especially bishops, because I know you, I know some of them do. What is the point of the synod? What is the point? That's where this declaration should have been discussed in private, feedback given from all around the world, including the African bishops, including bishops in Asia and so other and some other places. You know, I'm going to give them their feedback. Because again, as I said, you know, even before this document, priests were blessing people in irregular situations all the time. People that weren't even baptised were getting blessed. It happened at masses. You know, in many places, if you're not in a state of grace or you're not a baptised Catholic, please do not receive communion, but you can come up for a blessing. You know, and that encompassed everybody that, that you know, if you weren't in a state of grace, if you're in an irregular situation, you come up for a blessing. What changed? What changed? God bless you. Take care. Pray for the church.